thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about transportation from A to Z and give you some information about the company which is dedicated to transport, which is Hazentown. We have uh, basically five bullet points for tonight. The first is a little introduction of what Hazentown actually is. Probably a lot of you people don't know Hazenka. You probably know DHL, Kuna Nago, the big logistic companies, but there are smaller ones. Uh, what we actually do, then we have a little brief summary about the locations and uh, our global network. And then number five, what is basically Hazenkamp and what is uh, setting us apart from the rest. So maybe one of you guys have had a family vacation, had to pack the car, get the luggages, and you always face an issue. The car is too small, the luggages are too small, you have to pay extra at the airline. So everything in life is actually a matter of transportation or a problem. So, what are we doing? We are problem solvers. And we are doing that since 1903, which is roughly 119 years now. Why are we doing logistics? The picture you're seeing here is my dad and myself. I'm actually the first generation of the company. And uh, what we love about the logistics we are doing is uh, we, we deal with people. So we encounter a lot of people, we are moving culture, we making people aware of different cultures by moving exhibitions or as you see here in the Biennale, you see a lot of artworks from all over the world. There has been a lot of steps in the last hundred plus years. So by now, we have roughly 1,000 employees worldwide. We have about 100,000 square meters of storage, which is dedicated to art. And uh, we have around a fleet of 300 specialized art trucks, which are climatized, which have air suspension and some other features. So we can transport very sensitive, and, uh, highly expensive goods around the globe. The business areas Hasenkamp is dealing with is, of course, the most known fine art logistics. It's the removal and storage, which is, for example, you're moving, your company is sending you abroad, and you call us, we do all the transportation. Uh, we have a full service logistics projects department. If you have ever been to a hospital or anything like that, and you have to uh, have seen a um, a X-ray machine or anything like that, which is very sensitive and expensive, we, we deal with those issues. And then your personal files are from lawyers or from the court, they have to store files, so we have a big uh, um, storage for that as well, which is completely digitalized. Further, not really business units, but Units which are helping us to fulfill those um, problems which may occur. We have a department which is specialized in logistics and engineering solutions. So whenever you have a big, let's say, mm, sculpture like Jeff Koons, which you shouldn't touch, you need to pack it to ship it. So that's what this engineering solution department is doing. We have customs department, that's always a big part. We have a IT department, which is programming software and other uh, necessary IT support. We have an in-house consultant for museums where we recommend how to build the museum in terms of storage, to get the artworks into the museums, and so on and so forth. And we have the insurance department, because if you are transporting goods which are in the 100 million and above range, you better have an insurance. 
some key figures. He developed patterns for packaging, which uh, are worldwide. We have 800 removals per month. We are packing roughly 3,250 boxes a day. We ship to 138 destinations in the world. And to give you a roughly idea of how big the storages are, don't really know what 100,000 uh, square meters are. It's around 14 football pitches full of goods. And 1,000 employees, and 600 of them in Germany, which underlies its national um, outcome of this company. Therefore, if you look at the maps, that's where we are based, where we have offices, storages, and operations. Quite a lot of cities. 18 locations in, in Europe. 13 in Germany. Three in Asia. In Singapore, Hong Kong, and Beijing. And five in the Middle East. So we have been involved in the Middle East for 15 plus years now. Hasenkamp is basically one brand of the group. So we have other companies which are in the group and we, which, which we are basically serving our customers worldwide. So what is setting us apart from the rest? Basically four major points, responsibility, customer satisfaction for us company policy is always customer is the king doesn't mean he's always right but we need to make him happy quality and sustainability the responsibility for us is not just from the environmentally perspective but also from our employees so we have roughly 778 training days per year for employees to get make them better and uh, therefore serving our customers. The company contains roughly 27 nationalities and growing. We have four, 43 trainees and the average employee who is staying with us in Congress for two and a half years which means we have also employees who are beyond 70 who are still working, although they retired, but they like the job that they are doing. And we spend roughly 170,000 euros per year for those training purposes. Commitment to people, even for a small company like ours, is for us a very big thing. We are a family company, so therefore we try to prove writing and reading for children. We have different projects with, uh, for people with special needs. So for example, we have a small carpentry shop which is uh, building small crates uh, and they are all handicapped and couldn't work in a normal environment and therefore we support those actions. And of course, we sponsor sport like a lot of others. Not by any smaller. So customer satisfaction. As I said, the customer is always the king. Doesn't mean he's always right. But uh, we try to fulfill the needs of the customers wherever we are. Quality, when it comes to our transportation especially, you cannot do a lot of mistakes. If you destroy a Picasso, it's gone. The artist is dead, no one can restore it. So we have to be very, very careful. So therefore, we certify with uh, a lot of different international certification companies to 
guarantee our high standards of service level. And we have to do that every year again. Sustainability has always been a big part in our business. My father started, uh, I think, 2008 with the first approach to build a carbon dioxide free warehouse. But uh, if you read the press, it becomes more and more important to everyone. So we see ourselves as a pioneer in, in that sector. The sector for us contains three major parts. That's the storage, the packaging, and the logistics. Of course, our trucks are still driving with uh, petrol, and uh, probably that will remain for quite some time. But we are also already working with different companies who are looking into electric or electrified transportation. So, what, do we ca what can we do with our trucks who are using petrol? So we have telematics supported trucking, so people know where not to stand in a traffic jam, what is the best way, where to go. The drivers are getting coaching how to drive fuel efficient, and we monitor all that. The European Union has established an energy efficient status and we are 55% more efficient than the highest standard which is set by the European Union for us. Which brings us to our storage and uh, we are very proud that we even have a plan for storage which is sustainable for regions like in Saudi Arabia and the climate is pretty harsh. It can be very cold in the night, it can be very hot during the day, but uh, without petrol or gas, we can provide a stable climate, which is especially important for artworks of different kind. Packaging. We try to use only recyclable material mostly wood. We just developed a new crate, which is called the Flexim, which is 50% lighter than all the other crates we, we had before, and 98% of the crate is basically composable. This means you can basically plant tomatoes on it. So what we are doing further is there are some ideas to plant trees for the fuel we're using or for the carbon dioxide we're we emitting during air freight and trucking. And we are thinking of planting trees for that as well. And there are other um, projects with big um, car companies where we're trying to um, actually have electrified trucks and power them with solar energy which are on the roofs of every of our warehouses. So what I tried to show you in a brief summary of this whole company is transport from A to Z is not just loading something on a plane or on a truck and that's it. There are a lot of people involved from customs, from the logistics, from the engineering department, um, if you look at the Biennale, it's quite tough to have so many artworks from all over the world being here in Riyadh at the right time and then to install all those artworks. And it's not always that we are doing it, we are doing it with our customers. And um, things like the Biennale in Riyadh are possible because those people are working together. And um, for me personally, being here at the opening of the Biennale is why I love my job. Seeing all the faces during the opening, seeing the culture from all over the world being shown here in Riyadh to all the different people 
uh, makes all the efforts worth it. And um, yeah, I, am, I can say I'm a little bit proud to be at least a tiny, tiny part of this Biennale in terms of the logistics. So, and uh, if you like to know anything, sign up for this newsletter. Sometimes it can be very exciting. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask whatever is on your mind. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. I have a question. Uh, in this project specifically, which artwork was the most difficult to ship and why? Which posed the, the most problems? How did you solve those problems? Uh, that's a good question, and a lot of artworks which were really complicated. So I think Robin is going to get further into that on this uh, speech. But um, for example, if you the glass installation was very difficult. We actually helped the artist to create a method how he can actually install his own artwork because he never thought about it. Oh, you're talking about Larry Bell. Yes, and he's using it now, but I, it's actually Robin who is telling those stories, so I don't want to uh, get too much into it. But every artwork is unique. You have to treat it very unique. and. Um, there's always some complications you have to solve. So there's, I mean, if I look back, what we have been transporting, if you look at the golden mass from Tutankhamun in Egypt to the Terracotta army in Xi'an, so there are a lot of very complicated objects we, which we had to pack and ship it from me to that. So um, probably the easiest is a painting, it's not too big, but um, any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you for joining. I hope it was a little bit interesting. It's probably a little bit of the, the normal lectures, a little bit different, but um, happy you joined. <laughs>